those Christians that said they knew best for my child, and mm -hmm. and this is what he looks like now. Wow. Can you get a shot of this, sir? Wow. Yeah. And, and, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Do my children look like that, Brother Mike? You know my children. And he came to live with us for six months. Mm. And he said, had you raised me, my life would not be like this. And he's kind of, he kind of understands, but he's hurt. And if you look here, look at what that says. That, look what photo that is. Yeah. Thanks, Christians. Y'all knew, they were, you know. But yet, my children are in the faith. Um doing well, you know, they deal with the same issues as other children, but not, not always. I'm not going to say the same issues because I'm able to guide them in such a way that there's a lot that they don't deal with. You've seen that. I know, you know, just personally, I'm going through the same thing and, you know, those are concerns that I have and, you know, so I can relate to your uh, situation. Just seeing that, it's like, wow, I pray against it, but it, it is, um, a father is very important to have, so. You know, it's the will of the Father that we all might be, might, it's it might be delivered from this present evil world. Yes, sir. And I, I will add this, that, you know, along with raising my family, um, 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 they, we were raised, you know, we got by. Now, my children never went without anything. They didn't know we was poor and the people in the neighborhoods were down. We wasn't poor. But that child was raised uh, in an affluent neighborhood. Mm. And he was kept captive and can't deal with the real world because he was just captive and controlled by his mama and don't know how to be a man. Let me ask you this. So you because I'm trying to get to the to the part before you right before you get to straightway. OK, so you, you was talking about being behind the scene. We were talking that you was talking about you saw. Oh, I moved on. I moved on to another mega church. I got an offer yeah. to play at a church that was on one of the. Three networks. I can't remember which one it was. NBC, ABC. They were on every Sunday. It was. A, it's. A, it's still there now. Today, uh, uh, that big church. <laughs> and um, I, I wasn't there long. I wasn't there long. But this same experience I had there, I've had at other churches. And that where is you're you're like you're seen as as part of the not part of the elite. But, you know, when, when they say, uh, how can I put it without keeping it clean? Say it. Um, well, well, well you're, seen, you're seen as part of the administration. I'll put it that way. You know, even though it's music. And so you start being invited to things that are outside of church, you know. And they obviously wanted to bring me in closer for what reason. I don't know. I never got to find out. So I was invited around the pastors and the elders to watch a Super Bowl game. It was a Super Bowl. It was playoffs. It was something. I think it was playoffs. And, you know, I'm kind of hanging out trying to fill these guys out. I, I don't know anybody. So I don't know what their whole thing is, you know. And I... Um, Nobody's talking about, and I didn't expect them to talk about anything religious at all. We're watching a football game. But I did not expect when half tape came on, they put on porn. Wow. And I was like, okay. And, you know, they're looking for my reaction, which I didn't give them. I'm playing it cool. I mean, I'm, I'm, I got things going on in my head. It ain't kind about these men. You know what I'm saying? That's just not Okay, so you got pastors, elders, and they're literally putting on porn. Man, put it up. And I seen them wait for my reaction, you know. And I knew what it was then. I said, they seen if I'm going to come into the club, you know. And now I'm thinking now, the first thing in my head is, am I around a bunch of faggots? I mean, what men sit around? We all know about porn, but what men sit around in a group and hang out? We just, we from the church. We was watching the game, which I never was watching the game because I'm watching them, you know, kind of what the hell's going on. And then the porn thing. And then I get introduced to, you know, even at church functions, not on, not on Sunday, yeah. but even at church functions, you know, hey, you, you in the club now, um, not, not unspoken club. Um, you know, you can drink beer, alcohol, whatever, just put it in a coffee mug with a lid. You know, so I'm like, man, these people walk around here juiced up. Mm. <laughs> That's something else. That explains a lot. Wow. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. So you're, you're going through all these different church experiences. You seem to behind the scenes because of your, your gift in playing, playing instruments yes, and, and, and music. Um, when did, how did you discover Straightway? How did you discover uh, Straightway? And, and what was your initial thought about Straightway um, when you first ran into it? My initial thought. I was seeking the truth.
I, I started studying with the Seven Day Adventists. There was a guy named uh, Mel Stewart, bass player. He's played with a lot of people, Shaka Khan, all kind of people. I always knew him, but I never played with him. He's, he's, he's at least 10, 15 years older than me. And um, it was on my heart. And the way it happened, my wife is a witness for her own sake because she would have never believed me. I turtled her for a year. This guy won't go away. He's always on my mind. He's always on my heart. I got to find this guy. And it was an adventure, which is another story. I found him. And I come to him after playing uh, at church. I went and I'm still dressed in, in, in my suit and I go by his house. I finally find out where he lives and he's out front on the on the first day doing yard work, he and his wife. And I said, man, this, I explained it to him. You've been on my heart, blah, blah, blah. And he looks at his wife and they smile. We know why you're here. And they sit me down and tell me about the Sabbath and their seven day at Venice. So I studied with them for two years. And then just like Christianity, I started asking questions. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on, man. You know, Ellen G. White, you know, she ruling over her husband and all this hypocrisy. And y'all the people of the book, except when you want to twist a little here and a little there. You know, yeah. I said, well, you know, um, start asking questions. They got offended. Mm. I never became a seven-day Adventist. I just studied with them. They became offended. And there was a book that we were looking at. I can't remember who the author was. Come out of her, my people. I'm opening the mail. I'm at home. I'm opening the mail on the first day, uh, uh, sitting in my office. And uh, I'm standing up. I remember just, just like it was yesterday. And I typed in, come out of her, my people. Because the book never did grab me, but I figured I'm going to go back and look at that. And what popped up, the only uh, several subjects popped up. The only thing that popped up with a with a, a YouTube was passed down. I clicked on it, dun, 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 and I'm opening the mail. And he started letting loose on them. Mm. If they keep Sunday, it is an automatic sign. And I listened and I went on to listen and I listened all that day and the next day and the rest of the week. And then into the second week, my wife, who always handles the administrative part of the company, the billing, the, the banking, you know, I write out the budget, what everything goes and what it does. And she executes that. And she took care of the bills at home as 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 I had directed her to do this. And um all of a sudden, in my mail slot, starts showing up the bill. She never puts them in there because I should be working and bringing in funds. And I just, and then on the third week, I believe it was third week or second week, she start watching the videos with me, and we're just like. So I told her, honey, you know how many times I've been played, you know you've been played. She was not really brought up in church, but she's seen the hypocrisy, right? So I said, just, I didn't tell her this. I said, I, I'm going to handle this. So uh, I send Brother Dow an offering. I send Pastor Dow. I sent him an offering because I needed help. I needed help to quit smoking because if I couldn't quit smoking cigarettes, eventually I was going to die of smoking, smoking. Did Pastor Dow asked for money? No, no, he never asked for money. He's never even passed. They only pass a plate. They never pass a plate. He never has passed a plate. You know, but, but no, no, I want to test him because the word says, um, at the time, I was not being disrespectful to him, but the word says, try the spirit to see if it's of Yah. Mm -hmm. Now, I might have used it in the wrong context, but my intentions were good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try this spirit. Mm -hmm. And I sent him an offering and I told him my condition and what I needed help with. Mm -hmm. And so I'm driving along maybe a week later, week and a half later, and I realize I've been smoking 37 years. Now, I quit hard drugs like that, you know. People, oh, man, you look good. You still got your car. You got your car. You look nice. You, ah, come on, man. I quit drugs like that. Just, I mean, literally, just from one day to the next, done. But smoking, wow. Cigarettes. And sent the offering. A week or two later, I'm driving the truck. Send my truck, 18 wheel. That's the business that we have. And uh, uh, I realized I haven't smoked in a couple of days. It just hit me like a, <laughs> bam. I reach. My cigarettes are there. <laughs> my lighter's there. And uh, Tears just mm. overwhelm me, overwhelm me. I found him. I found this is true. This man is true. The words were true. Everything was lining up in the book. And not only lining up, I'm learning as they line it up. I'm not checking him like I know the word. I know a bunch of cliches that Christians use that ain't even in the Bible. You know, them Christian preachers will stand there and tell you, have a Mary and this and that, and uh, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today, and ain't none of that. Is. So I'm listening to this pastor. I'm learning, and I'm learning truths. And to have that done, I have seen people, 
brother. As a child, as a young man, I remember all the way up to being grown, playing in them mega churches. I seen people come down to altar call, wanting healing mm-hmm. in Christianity, sincerely wanting to be healed. I remember one woman in particular, Barbara Johnson. She, uh, excuse me, she, um, if there's a such thing as the model Christian, it's her. And she started walking funny. She said she had cerebral palsy. Then as time went on, she had a cane. And she keep coming down to this altar call. And then next thing I know, she had a walker. And then she had a wheelchair. <laughs> and, then, and then she died. Mm. And she ain't never had to die. They could have told her, we can't heal you. Mm. This is all just, you know, mm. she and so many people that I know, they ain't here right now. Because, and, and it's like all of them were genuine. They just never got the truth. Mm. But she stands out because I knew her. I knew her as a child. I knew her through all the mega churches. And um, she is a beautiful woman, man, just in, in, in her heart and her spirit. And to see her diminish like that is sad, man. The sick and shut-in list. That's it. We don't have one of those here. We don't have a sick and shut-in list. We got elders. If it be any sick among you, call upon the elders and uh, um, they hit me like a ton of bricks man I mean you know I, I, I remember where I was exactly where I was on the highway I pulled over man and I was I was just like a, a little baby just thankful and pissed off at the same time but more thankful and then you know eventually the, the anger the frustration you know moved on from that and made myself known to the ministry and uh, you know the spirit compelled me he don't ask no money compelled me to I added up how much money that I smoked in one year and I sent that mm. now wait a minute remember I've been off work watching videos and my wife is screaming we got no money I said write a check and send it you got the address yeah, just, okay. <laughs> and um, been blessed ever since. And I always try to encourage brothers to take it off the top. Take that 10% off the top. So, so let me ask you, so, so you, 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 you've seen the, so much hypocrisy from the, I mean, as, as little as nine years old, you was able to see the hypocrisy <laughs> behind the scenes and everything I hear. How long have you been a part of Straightway? Since 2013. So, so five years. Yes, sir. So, you 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 you've come down. When did, when you first came to straight when now from watching on YouTube, when did you come here and what was that like? We came here at Pass here? we came here at Passover 2013, fought all the way here. When I say fought, fought the devil. Hmm. You and your wife. Yeah, we're battling, spiritually battling. Because those spirits were never real hmm. until I came this way. Hmm. They were real, but they were never real hmm. until I came this way. And when we got here, it was at the end of the feast and everybody was going home. We came, our ve- my vehicle broke down and I was here for three weeks and people fed me and took care of me for three weeks. I went ahead and visited for a week. We ordered parts. The parts came in, wrong parts. It's that teacher Shane came home every day for one week after working. He wouldn't eat. He would come home just as soon as he got on the land. He'd go immediately to the shop and work on my vehicle until it just got you know, it, it, brother, go to bed. You know, you got to get up and come out and go to work. He did that for a week. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. These people. So, you, so, so that was your first time. That's what you experienced, that type of. They didn't know me. Three weeks. They fed me. And uh, I think only two of my children, the other two were grown. Wow. Yeah. So, 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 so have you seen that the same type of hypocrisy that you saw in the church, I mean, I'm assuming you have an eye for this stuff. Have you experienced that in the five years that you've known um, this ministry straightway, Pastor Dow? Have you seen that here? No, no. They, they truly, genuinely do live by his book as they learn because he's brought them along more and more and more, you know, with, with, with more and more truth, the spirit of truth and knowledge. He's brought this ministry. And no, I've never. Mm-hmm. No. So what's the, what's the biggest impact, and in on this, what's the biggest impact that this ministry has done for you? 
the biggest impact is that um, some of the big impacts is to know my role as I'm still learning my role. I don't know where y'all wants me in the ministry. So I'm just very supportive to the pastor just and encourage brother support, 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 support the ministry. It's very important. Uh, I know my role as a husband. I know my role as a dad, as a father. Uh, I know my wife's role in how she should submit to me. I know how to honor my wife. That yeah, that his honor, not the world. Um, there's so many big impacts. One of the things I've always been concerned about is my youngest son suffers from autism. So, and, and we've seen growth in that area too. As I get cleaned up, here's the key to that. One of the keys is I get cleaned up. You see more growth in his speech, in his mindset. He's always been an obedient child. But that biggest thing was to know that I have a people, I have a family, that I don't have to worry mm. about who's going to take care of my youngest child. Mm. If we live our lives in the order that, you know, the old grow old and, and pass away and live out their days and the generations, I don't, I don't have to be concerned with that anymore. But, you know, there's this, this things Levy charged the pastor down being arrogant or whatever. Did you ever have that sense about him when you, I know you said you heard him like, wow, but did you ever sense that? About Pastor Eric? No, no, not at all. Even before I think, I think his confidence is mistaken for arrogance, but he's got to be bold. If he was some soft spoken preacher, I wouldn't even take him that serious. Mm. I mean, I, I couldn't, mm. but he is bold for it. He is standing mm. strong and true for the most high, and he won't be moved. Mm. He won't be moved. He's never changed. Mm. He, he stay, I ask him, how do you stay like this? No matter what they say, what they do, what challenges come along, no matter what's going on in the ministry, no matter what goes wrong, what goes right, what nothing, he, he, never, he never changes. And I've sat for these five years and watched the book being played out. Um, 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 when the word says that um, um, such will be added as needed. Mm. You came along. I used to be frustrated with Pastor Dow on, on, on a couple issues, but it was me. And I mentioned one of them is, you know, why you had to be so honest? You sit here, you won't, you, you know, I understand the 503C thing, and I understand why, and I get it, and I really honor you for that. But can't we tell a lie and you quit paying all these damn tax for these people? Why you write this check and honest and pay these people all? And he couldn't stay, he didn't like it. But now I'm able to see the integrity mm. of a true mm. Jeremiah 315. As th if this is man's law, y'all's law is above man's law, but he honored that. And then, as I said, the most high would add, then along came you. Mm. Then along came the foundation. But do you see how he established that integrity? Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother Mike. <laughs> great, good. great interview. Great interview. Thank you so Thank much. You I don't have my head covering on, if I don't have a skirt on, I don't feel like, ah, I feel exposed. Mm. I feel like I'm not doing something right. Mm. Um, so I have it on all the time, wearing a skirt all the time, <laughs> even to bed. Mm.